I'm starting 2024 with a complete redesign of my water box aquarium. I've had it for over four years and it started out as a mixed reef, then I turned it into a lagoon and you can see all those videos on my channel. And finally, I'm starting to move it back into a mixed reef. Uh, it's already in a transition. If you look uh, at the previous video, you can see how I've introduced the first set of stony corals. But there are lots of uh, things that I can still do better. And in today's video, we will go through this process of getting it to the next level. Let's dive right in. What have we got here? Um, the lighting is AI Blades Gross. I have three of them. And again, you can look back at my lighting schedule in the previous video. But you can see that I'm completely redoing my aquascape. One of my viewers has asked me about my aquascape thoughts. And well, um, I'm trying to show you um, exactly what my thoughts are with this tank. And I'm trying to really get some balance. But before we are going to go into the balance, and what I mean by balance is the size of uh, colonies compared to the size of the fish, the flow, the layout, and whatnot, what we really need to do is first mount um, all corals on the rocks so that you can actually um, have a canvas to work with. You can see I have these corals on those little acrylic rods and I have a few holes in the rocks where I can take a coral, place it um, wherever I want and then later on if it grows or if I don't like the look I can just put it uh, and move it someplace else. However, the problem with those holes is that once you make them a lot of times they will um, grow with coralline algae over time and you're not going to be able to find them and just overall layout um, you can never really predict how many holes you need and uh, the layout of them so in today's episode what we are going to do is actually take a few rocks out and make a few holes and position the corals just an initial position so that they're all mounted somewhere and then we will try to go back and then uh, see if the corals um, found the optimal spacing, uh, they look the be their best, if needed, we can move it um, around a little bit more. But um, I think that the LPS, so things like hammers and the uh, framers, they're all gonna be a little bit lower um, and off to the side. And I think the center is gonna be a lot more uh, about the SPS and torches. That's my vision for this tank right now. Now, how uh, I also would want to add a little bit of more open sand uh, around here. Right now it's a little bit too cluttered. And I want the sand such that I can actually have access to it so I can stir it up so that it's always you know, nice and white as opposed to uh, having all this uh, algae on top of it. So this is where the sand has not been disturbed and you can see that the look is quite unsightly. So that would be another criteria. And then, as I had mentioned earlier, we're gonna work with uh, sizes of corals, making sure that everything is in balance. I don't like a lot of um, tanks on the internet. This is, uh, say hello to my dog. Um, I don't like a lot of tanks on the internet just because um, a lot of them are just display of different corals or frags that a person has, which there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's not a bad um, way to go. It's just what I want in my tank, I want to achieve that look of a more of a planted freshwater aquarium. I think those are uh, a living art and um, they evoke certain um, feelings when you look at it. You And I want to evoke a feeling of an ocean. I want something as natural as possible. Now we are far from uh, the end result, but that is why I'm documenting um, my steps in this video to show you how I think about this process. Also, I'm using your help as a viewer to um, maybe adjust a few things around and it's a, it's a work in progress. So. 
I guess the next step is let's uh, start with, oh, you can see I've got a few colonies just kind of sitting around and a few frags over here or small colonies. Uh, but I have this rock in the back there. So in the few previous videos, I've already worked on this rock over here and this work, uh, rock on the right. But this rock, I've got this hammer colony, which I think is a little bit um, too white for my taste. Now, if I move it to uh, a different tank and it's under blue light, it's actually quite golden. But over here, it just gets washed out. So I'm going to lower it a little bit, maybe find another rock that uh, things are going to go over here. And then uh, my goal would be to take this rock uh, that it's sitting on and make sure that there's as many holes in it as possible so that we can position a few of those um, colonies. And then uh, what I will do is I will uh, move things around and start moving some corals uh, around as well. So let's uh, get going. The left side looks a little bit better. I've taken this large hammer and I've placed them on this temporary rock over here. I say temporary because um, the next step is going to be messing around with uh, the left side. But you can see that for now I've taken the big colonies from down below and I've placed them right over there, which is not a bad spot for them for now. So the next step will be to uh, work on kind of these two bushes of uh, frog spawn and uh, hammer. Um, first of all, they're too large, even for this aquarium. I know that some of you have said that, you know, they, you prefer large colonies I'm with you, but I think that I want to shrink it just a little bit. But first, before I'm even going to touch this guy here, I'm going to start with the frog spawn in the back. So the frog spawn in the back is actually attached to the rock. Uh, you can see it right from the side. And there was also a bunch of those uh, vermited snails here that I need to break off. So the next step will be to take this left rock out of the water and then um, just break off the frog spawn, uh, clean up the rock, uh, make a few holes in it with the drill, and then decide what to do with the frog spawn. I may just kind of try to place it back in or maybe I'll cut it in half and go from there. And if anybody is interested, this is what the drill um, that I'm going to be using. It's just a, it's a standard drill and the drill bit itself is, um, I think it's designed for concrete and it's a masonry bit. Um, I think it's quarter inch um, or so. So it's, it's good enough uh, for those holes so that I can place those uh, corals. And there's still lots of mess over here on the ground. I, I'm not happy with that, but one step at a time. I just doing one step at a time. And we are done. This is how the sausage is made. Now, you've all seen the rock um, that I've taken out. This is it cleaned up. This is how much gunk I have uh, taken off the rock. This is all the dead coral that I've um, just broken off piece by piece. And I think like half of it is just old coral growth that um, that's why uh, they call it reef builders or, uh, because this is how the reef is being made. So if you just leave it be, this thing is gonna grow and grow and grow. But let's take a look at the actual piece of rock here. You can see that I've used this drill and there's tons of little holes here that give me just enough spacing so that um, later on I can put uh, some corals in. Right now there's going to be large colonies that are going to be going in so I'm not going to be using all of them but I think it will be fun to have a few extra holes just in case and I don't know. Uh, I don't know where the vision is going to take me with, uh, with this rock. Maybe it'll, uh, it'll be different and maybe it's not going to be a euphilia garden. So that's uh, how I uh, take my, I think about my rock work. Before I'm going to show you the final result, I had a little accident. These things happen quite regularly, unfortunately. I got stung by a coral. I think you can see it right over here. This is pretty... Uh, Pretty unpleasant, to say the least. Um, 
and the coral that did it is probably one of the euphilia. I don't really know, I'm wearing gloves, but when I go um, inside of the tank, sometimes you just brush up against another uh, coral and this is what happens. Uh, using uh, the tweezers does help somewhat. Uh, sometimes when I reach down, I'm trying to minimize the amount of skin contact with the water. But anyways, this is what the tank looks like right now. And we've done a fair bit of work today. So you can see that I've cleaned up this rock in the back completely. I've moved small SPS corals kind of up on this ledge over here. I've introduced a new rock here that has a few corals. And the nice thing about this one is there's covered with um, DG. Um, it's just green mantipara. And for some reason decided to encrust. And it, the whole rock just looks very nice. It looks very green. Um, and I think it's a nice contrast with uh, some red and some yellow. This is the goldenrod anacropora. Now, I think I'm going to let it settle just for a little bit because uh, the tank has gone through a fair bit of stress today. Um, I've moved a lot of corals around. You can see that uh, some sand got kind of uh, up in the water column. So the idea is to leave it be for now maybe one final thing i'm going to do is just even out the sand uh, later tonight just so that uh, everything kind of gets nice and clean but really the main focus for the next session will be to well figure out how do we actually make this whole thing uh, look nice because right now it's definitely an improvement um, but it's it's a work in progress so thanks, uh, stay tuned for the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe uh, to not miss the next episode. I think the next one is going to be epic because uh, we will uh, get the balance right.